Odysseus's entire fleet, which had set sail from Ithaca for Troy, had been destroyed in his attempt to return home after the war. Only Odysseus's captaincy ship escaped the tragedy. After a long time of sailing aimlessly on the sea, they found a beautiful island. But this did not gladden the hearts of the men of Ithaca, for they were traumatized by their last experiences on the island of the Cyclops and the Lestragonians. The men set up camp on the beach, but the soldiers' low morale left them inert and without the courage to explore the island. But Odysseus grabbed a bow and set off after a prey for dinner. Due to the grace of the gods, Odysseus found a small deer. Using his exceptional marksmanship, he brought the animal down with a perfect shot. As he was returning to the beach with the animal's carcass on his back, he spotted a puff of smoke on the other side of the island. The men of Ithaca were overjoyed to see the king return with precious food. But these smiles quickly vanished when Odysseus ordered the formation of an expedition to find out who lived on that island. The hero did not wish to be responsible again for sending more men to their deaths. Therefore, the chosen ones would be elected by the gods through a lottery. The group of men led by Eurylochus went out to find who oversaw the island. They found a beautiful palace, but the entrance was filled with wolves and lions, which terrified the men. But to the explorer's amazement, these creatures seemed as docile as pets. Suddenly, one of the men heard the singing of a woman coming from inside the palace. A beautiful woman was singing as she weaved. She was Circe, daughter of Helios and Percy. She had an enchanting beauty. Circe stood up and welcomed her visitors, inviting them in. She asked the guests to share a magnificent feast with her. Odysseus's men enjoyed the splendid delicacies offered by the lady, while Circe filled their cups with a magic potion. Suddenly, one of the men tried to speak, and his throat emitted a horrendous animalistic sound. The terrified visitors began to undergo a metamorphosis. A large snout started to appear on their faces, and their hands were replaced by split hooves. Circe had turned all the visitors into pigs, and with her staff, she led them into the pigsty. But as a precaution, Eurylochus had not entered the palace, suspecting a trap. He was an eyewitness to that grotesque scene. Eurylochus desperately told everything he witnessed to Odysseus, who promptly set out to rescue them. Eurylochus begged Odysseus not to go to Circe. He recommended that they leave that island immediately, before they were all turned into pigs or worse. But Odysseus felt it was his duty to try to save the few men he had left, even if it cost him his life, and he set off. On his way through the forest, he met a young man. This was Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Hermes related exactly what had happened to Odysseus's men. He said that the same would happen to him if he did not take precautions during his journey. The god gave the king an antidote to the sorceress's potion. He advised him to threaten her vigorously to make her submit once she brandishes the staff. Eventually, she would attempt to invite him into her bed. Odysseus was to accept and win her friendship to free his countrymen. But first, she would have to swear that she would not try to do him any more harm. Odysseus drank the antidote and proceeded towards the palace. Circe was excited by the arrival of yet another visitor, welcoming him kindly. She led Odysseus to a beautiful throne where he could rest and where he was served a refreshing drink. Odysseus took the potion offered by his hostess, who looked on excitedly as he drank all the liquid from the golden cup. Then Circe touched the hero with her staff and ordered him to head for the pigsty, for that was where the pigs were. But Odysseus was immune to her charms, and he pushed the staff away, threatening Circe with his sword. With a seductive look, the lady asked Odysseus to spare her life and invited him to share her bed. Odysseus said he would accept the invitation, provided she swore not to attempt his life or do any harm. Circe took the oath, and the king of Ithaca and the sorceress were united in the divine bed. The next day Odysseus was very well treated by the nymphs who cleaned and dressed him. Circe was sitting at the table waiting for the king. A great feast had been served, but he said it would be unworthy to eat while his men lived in a dump like pigs. 
Cersei went to the pigsty and used her powers to restore the pigs to their previous form. Odysseus was amazed by the scene, noting that his companions seemed to be younger and healthier than before. The men embraced and celebrated their return to their former form. Cersei was magnanimous to the men who entered her domains. She invited them to stay until they felt ready to move on. Odysseus and his men stayed on Cersei's island for a year, enjoying the hospitality of their divine hostess. But one day, the warriors of Ithaca pressed the hero to return home. Odysseus confessed to Cersei his desire to leave. She replied that she did not want to keep him there against his will. But before he could head home, Odysseus was to visit one of the most frightening places in the world. The hero was to go to the realm of Hades in search of answers.